So you got to read a whole lot of colonial laws. We know what it did. Here's what it did. It did, it did not relinquish the queen's claim of dominion over the island. She still owns it. It did not return ownership of the land and the resources of the people. We don't own them. It did not restore our birthright inheritance. It did not compensate the natives for the wealth stolen from us through 400 years of slavery. It did not remove the queen of head of, as head of state. She's still very much there. And by the way, I've heard that the government here has said that they want to remove the queen and move us to republic. They don't have the authority. They do not have the authority. That's something that they tell you in an election to get you worked up because they know that Jamaicans are full of national pride. But they don't have the authority. They work for her. How your employees are going to take away your ownership? How can your employees take away your power? It did not rescind the Governor General as Lord of the Land. He still is. We know that. And he's still the Commander-in-Chief of the military. That's why, again, you might have to edit this, but that's why when they wanted, when Bruce Golding wanted them to go into Tivoli and kill some Jamaicans, he had to get the Governor General to declare a state of emergency and send in the army. The Prime Minister doesn't control the army. The army is still the militia and is there for the Governor General to enforce the power of the Queen through violence. I'm not saying this to be controversial. I'm saying this as a matter of fact. And more important, I'm saying this as a matter of law. It did not revoke the birth certificate bonds on the citizenry. We're still bonded. I showed you that. And it did not resolve the debts that have been accrued upon the people. This so-called independent nation started out flat broke. And not only were we broke, but we started out in debt. So the government of Jamaica and the Bank of Jamaica, which are both foreign-owned entities, meaning they're owned by the Queen. We don't own them. I've read the Bank of Jamaica Act of 1960. We do not own the Bank of Jamaica. All right? There is a reason that you can go to the University of the West Indies and never be required to read any of this stuff. There's a reason you can do four degrees and never learn that the birth certificate is a bond. Because if they taught you how your system of law was actually designed to work, you probably would not submit to it. So the GOJ and the BOJ began to borrow large sums of money from predatory multinational lenders. We know them well. The International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, and the USAID. Those loans carried high interest rates and harsh penalties called structural adjustment policies. Here's an example of a structural adjustment policy. We have three million people on this island. How many full-service general hospitals do we have? Six. Six hospitals on an island of three million people. Portmore is the most populous city in the Caribbean. And Portmore still doesn't have a general hospital. The reason Portmore doesn't have a hospital is because of something called structural adjustment policies. When the IMF lends you money, they tell you what you can spend it on. And they told us explicitly, you can't build no new schools. We haven't built any new schools in 20 years. We haven't built any new hospitals in 30 years. This is why. This is the grip of poverty. The other thing that these structural adjustment clauses have caused is a sell out of all our resources. That's why we don't own the bauxite. We don't own the tourism industry. We don't own the telecommunications company. We don't own the power company. We don't own the water company. We sold off all the farmland. We sold off the airports. We don't own them. So 52 years later, as we were waving flags this August, those SAPs are essentially running the economy. They dictate everything from the value of the dollar to the rate of income tax to whether a school stays open or your road gets fixed. Today, half of every dollar of tax you pay goes towards servicing the debt. And the other half, by the way, goes to royalties and the bondholders. Your taxes do not finance your country at all.
and it's your income tax that does it, not the dollar of it. The end result, of course, is a bankrupt economy. There is a group, a think tank in Washington, D.C. called the Center for Responsible Economic Policy. They published a report last year. In that report, they declared that Jamaica is the single most indebted nation on the planet. That means that of all the 119 countries on Earth, we're the only ones who owe so much money relative to the size of our economy. Our debt exceeds our GDP. We cannot possibly repay it. We're not meant to. And basically, we now have an entire population working to service that debt. We are now debt slaves. We have gone from being bound slaves to being bonded slaves to being debt slaves. That's why the subtitle on the flyer you got said how we were made slaves and why we're still not free. We're still free.